Hi there, this is Brad Feeks with the Estes Group, and I wanted to take a little time today to go through a MES scenario that I've been working through with one of my customers. A customer came to us looking to understand a little bit with MES and using a work queue when you have multiple jobs to be working through in a given scenario. So, I have a situation where I want to get us logged into MES and get the clock rolling so I have some live data to work with. And then I want to step back and go through the setup and talk through the mechanics of this. And then by the time I'm done talking about the back end, hopefully we can see some real live data and explain what just what we're doing here. So let me start off by logging into MES through using a employee ID. As you can see, I have the old fashioned version of MES here. I'm going to go ahead and launch work queue and I am going to search for a given resource group. In my example here, we're using the assembly blue cell. So I'm going to go and jump into here and I'm going to look for a couple of jobs that I have out there that are in the current work queue. So I'm going to go ahead and start the activity for those. And we're doing production. We don't have any setup to do. Okay, so now I've taken, I've started two operations, and these have fallen into the active work queue now. I want to step back a little bit and just talk about what this whole uh, goal of this, this situation was. So the customer that I was working with, they have a situation where they log into multiple jobs concurrently because they are processing a number of, of common parts uh, concurrently. And they are trying to understand what they could do from an MES standpoint to try and make that work. And specifically, they wanted to know how that affects the costing and the back end when all those different uh, labor entries come together. So what I did is I built a little bit of a scenario. I took two parts, BDF uh, and BDF01, very similar parts to each other, both manufactured parts with a revision and some similar uh, operations on both of them. All right, real simple single operation uh, methods and I created two jobs for them. All right, job 2417 and 2418. Wait for the system here to catch up with me. Biggest difference between these two jobs is in the production standards. So I have 10 minutes per piece for the one and 20 for the other and You'll see here, both of these jobs have a production quantity of 10 pieces. So I have two jobs, same uh, operation and work area with two different production standards. Now, the employee that I logged in as has a rate of uh, 40. And the resource group has a base rate, a labor rate of 50 and a burden rate of 100%. This is our assembly blue cell. So that being the case, let's assume that this uh, worker was working on these different items and now went to end activity. All right, so the activity for those two uh, job operations ended and I ended without completing quantities. And the question that the customer had was, now just what does that do on the back end in terms of the apportioning of costs between the two? So I created a very simple little uh, dashboard to try and pull those two together, very similar to what you'd see in the job tracker, except I wanted to see across multiple jobs and see how that worked. So you'll see I have my two jobs, 17 and 18, making similar parts different production standards, all characterized in minutes per piece. They came to a total of estimated production hours accordingly. And so what you see here is when you take multiple operations that are worked on at the same time, they create a, a total amount of time that you worked, but you take the total hours of 0.05, it got apportioned proportionally to the estimated production hours. So more of the total hours got apportioned to this job where the production standard is 20 minutes per piece versus only 0 0.02 being apportioned to the job where you were doing a, a labor standard of 10 minutes per piece. Which means 
from a cost standpoint, given that our production and burden rates are the same, uh, different la uh, actual labor and burden costs are applied to each of those operations. So one job takes more of the cost because the assumption is you're taking a larger percentage of that labor time. And that's how MES looks to divide the, the cost and the time when you are doing one activity for two operations concurrently. So if you have any more questions, I'd love to hear from you. My name is Brad Feeks and I'm with the Estes Group and you have a great day.